welcome to the NBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Herman Santo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I no longer fear the maw of madness, for I have journeyed within and found cute ladybug thingy that scares me. Oh, gosh. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Somebody touch my escargot! So, anywho, and in today's episode review, we are going to cover a Patreon review by Master of Lag. He wants us to cover a very Valentine's Day episode of The Miraculous Ladybug. And in today's review. Why? <laughs> I don't know. But in, anyway, in today's review, we are going to review Season 1, Episode 10 Dark Cupid. And in this episode, according to Netflix, Marionette considers declaring her feelings to Adrian for Valentine's Day, but they must stop Dark Cupid, a villain bent on eradicating love. Wow, that was too loud. (laughs) Anyway, so before we officially start, let's go for first impressions. Silver, what do you think of said episode? Oh my god, did we break you? What can I say? Uh, so much of this is is based on presentation. And watching this all, I had to take little breaks because I was feeling a little overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. I mean, one, I'm still getting to know these characters. They're still kind of, sort of coming out of nowhere for me. And I don't know them that well. But then part of it is just the motion. The way everyone sort of is moving normal, but then will suddenly zip across the screen. And I feel like, are you going for realism? Are you going for cartoonish? It feels like a little bit of both. And so this is, again, just the outsider looking in, trying to make sense of this all. And oh my God, that tiki thing scares me. (laughs) Still on tiki. All right, you know. Well, the little cat thing is there, but he's less in your face about it. The tiki thing, it's like, away from me, demon bug. (laughs) I have no soul for you to take. This is why I don't like like insects. I hate them. <laughs> All right, you then. Well, oh, well. well, when we get into this proper, I will tell you how ladybugs actually do relate to the legend of love. All right, you then. All right, you then. Oh my God, no! Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, I have to. Break... I don't like your voice in this regard. Oh well. It scares me. I, I have to break Kefi for a bit because here's the lowdown. I personally do not know what Silver thinks of said episode, so this is going to be my first time hearing it. Sefi on the I other- know! And boy, do I know, because he wouldn't shut up about it. Oh, oh, you you enjoy talking about it. You yeah, enjoyed, I did, I did. You enjoyed this preview of Madness. Yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> so, guys at home, we're going to have fun. So, uh, is that all, Silver? For now. All right. Yes. Bring out your saxes, phones. <laughs> We're about to get jazzy. Seppi, what about you? What do you think of said episode? Well, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough? <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, and as for me, this episode was fun? Question mark? Hmm, how to put this? I've seen it in... Either French or Korean, I don't remember. But rewatching it's, it, it's French. Like no, no, I mean the dub version of this. Like, it, oh. like I mentioned before, I watched the dub version first before listening to English, and I seriously got no idea what to think of this one. It's entertaining. It's fun. I do like the voices for this one. They're really on point at some parts, but. I don't know. Understanding them and... It's an episode. Was there to understand? I don't know. But still, it's an exactly. episode. Exactly. It's an episode. It was fun, I guess. Chloe is a witch, so yeah. Oh witch yeah, that, that's the that's the rich girl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, oh. More on her later. Yeah, but still, episode was okay. I, I don't know what to say. The villain for this one is interesting too. So, yeah. 
Uh, let, let's head into reviews. If you guys at home would love to watch this, please do. Watch this first before hearing what we have to say. It's on Netflix. True. It's on Netflix and it's on everywhere where it's available. Hmm, yeah. No, don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> so, anywho, we'll guys wait for you to finish watching. Welcome back. How do you guys like it? Any good? Any fun? Well, join us for no. this. No. <laughs> Join us for this insanity. So, anywho, we start off the episode with our heroes in class learning about love or, well, it's more specifically a story about the whole kissing, uh, what you want to call this? What, what, what did the teacher say? Um, Stop making us watch Miraculous Ladybug! <laughs> okay. Here's, here's the thing. She didn't. She asked the classic question, but I'm going to say this right now. <laughs> this is the worst literature teacher these poor kids could have. Okay, yeah. Well, explain why. She is awful. Awful, awful, Agreed. awful. Agreed. And it's like, oh my god, kill me. First of all. Like, mm-hmm. The things I do for the MBS show, I hope you know that. I hope you people appreciate it. Especially because we're happy right here. Thank you, Seppi. Right, so first of all, she asked the class, what does the kiss of love mean? And this girl who's totally over the moon smitten, love will conquer evil. That's right. No, it isn't! <laughs> <laughs> if you read actual fairy tales, like we're going the the real Brothers Grimm, oh. it is messed up. Yeah. First of all, Snow White, cast aside your Disney perceptions, Snow White was not woken by a kiss. They were dra- they were carrying her casket. Casket. The prince's men were rather clumsy and dropped her, and it dislodged the poison apple from her throat, and she spat it out. Ooh, wow! <clears throat> Forget love's first kiss. You need love's first Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. oh! Did you hear about the one with Sleeping Beauty? No, 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 no! Oh, and got woken up no. by pregnancy. Oh, God. oh God. no! Please, no! That's not. No. I. I... I had heard of that. I, I debated whether I should go that far. No, Thank no, you, Safi, no, no. for please, please, pushing please. the envelope. Oh, and, and the stepsisters from Cinderella, they had their eyes pecked out. Oh, God. And their feet cut off. Yay! And, and the witch from Sleeping Beauty, they made her dance in, like, burning shoes until she died. Yeah, fairy tales is messed up, people. And so here's yeah. this... T- Here's this teacher going, oh, yes, it's all love. Love can totally conquer evil. Yeah, that's but, the story. But oh, guys. God, I made a dream. <laughs> but guys. My grandma believes in the Disney version because I tried telling her about the 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 real Brothers Grimm version. Mm-hmm. She did not enjoy it. But, but guys, but guys, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't, don't hurt, hurt me, no more. Me. No, Mom. <laughs> Yes, that, well, that is what the, that is what Sleepy Beauty said to the prince when she woke up. What did you do to me? <laughs> but, That's just sick. You sick. You sick. <laughs> but back to Stick this. In the head. Back to this fraud of a teacher. <laughs> Even if I accept the idea that this is just kidified, and you know we can't get into that dark stuff mm. with a young audience. <laughs> Here, Baxter Stockman in the classroom. There. <laughs> yes. He starts saying, oh, well, that's only accounts for 68%. And she's like, yes, thank you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of teacher are you? He's pointing out a very big flaw in this argument. The fact that the love's first kiss is not a constant across all fairy tales. And you're shutting him down? Yeah, man. Like, nobody wants to hear, you? like, nobody wants to hear scientific mumbo-jumbo multi-reflection. It's not scientific mumbo-jumbo. It's counting. This teacher couldn't count this if she took her shoes off. <laughs> but still, uh, how do I even proceed? Gosh dang it. Uh, but anywho, Adrian in class, uh, Adrian wasn't paying attention in class, and or quote-unquote wasn't paying attention in class. Teacher um, Miss, what you call this? Miss Bustier uh, calls out Adrian, and Adrian says like, blah, 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 love first kiss, yeah, whatever. And yeah, uh, bell rings and everybody heads out. Adrian here is writing a poet for his crush, and his crush is at said ladybug. Now, what was the what was the homework assignment they had? You had to read uh, a fairy tale. Yeah, the uh, according to said uh, plot dump, uh, they have to read Sleeping Beauty by 
uh, Charles Perel, Perel, uh, Perel oh, how do you say that name? Perel, the French version. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah. By Ch- well, all, uh, I'm, sorry, good. all I'm saying is they're in for an awkward discussion tomorrow if someone reads the really old versions. Uh, I think it is because, uh, you know what, Silver? Try and say this because I am Asian and foreign words hurt me. I'm American. I'm going to insult someone without even trying. <laughs> that sounds about right. Charles Perlou? Sounds right. No, Charles Peral. Yeah, it sounds Peral. about right. I believe I'm I'm probably in the neighborhood. I think you're about Which right. is more than I can say for this teacher. <laughs> oh yes, yes. But anywho. Um Adrian thinks his love letter is junk and dumps it in the mail. And Marinette, being the creep, goes dumpster diving. Yes. Yes. Nothing says love like I'm rifling through your stuff. <laughs> she's probably got, she's probably got a dumpster diving date later that evening. <laughs> okay, I need to point something out to the audience at home. We are just playing this up for laughs. Like we're just going over. Just... We are. <laughs> yes. Are you not? What? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Uh, yes, so anywho, uh, Marinette here is going through the trash looking for Adrian's note and she found Adrian's love letter and she's, well, pretty smitten by it and wondering who could said girl be? Oh, wow. Said love letter has, your hair is jet black, your eyes as blue as the heavens. I want to ask who you are behind your mysterious mass. I see you every day and I would like you to give me a sign. I shall love you till the ends of days. Will you be my valentines? And yes, uh, and this is to quote-unquote translated from the French version. So uh, if you're watching the English version, it'll be, be, it'll be a bit off. But still, it's, it, um, it's still the same. Marina is wondering... Who could this person be? She has jet black hair, eyes blue as a heaven. Hmm, I wonder who could this be? And Tiki just says, it could uh, be you. Tiki! <laughs> it could be it's you. Tiki! <laughs> Tiki is on the screen, I am afraid! <laughs> and Tiki just says, it could be you, uh, Marinette. But Marinette says, no, 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 it couldn't be me. Who am I? I'm clumsy and derp. So, yeah. I just want to stress that Tiki freaks me the frig out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I beat this this little thing who's zipping around and then getting right up in the camera's face. So it's like she's staring right into my soul and I, I stare back and see the void. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah. But anywho, when Adrian leaves the class, we get to see Chloe and Sabrina handing Adrian a petition to... Well, what was it again? To save the hamsters. Yeah, yeah, because they're wearing very ugly sweaters. Ooh, bad, bad, bad people who put hamsters in um, sweaters, yes. But in actuality, it's just a poster of him so she could make everyone jelly. And said poster has says to Chloe, the most wonderful girl of the universe and the love of my life. Yeah, mm, yeah. That sucks. Wow. Definitely so, sabotage. Uh, I would consider that actually illegal. <laughs> I don't know what the fr- what the French laws are, but he's basically been asked to sign a con- contract and declaration that is not intentional, defamation of character. Yeah, true that, true that. But anywho, who cares about that? Because we get to walk home with Marinette. On the way home, we get to see Point Dexter handing over a wonderful brooch to Kim, the sports guy of the group. He is, which made, mm-hmm. which made me wonder if Baxter Stockman here may have, might have had feelings for him. <laughs> but nah, it's just a gift to be handed to Kim so he can give it to the girl of his love. Question though, what is this young, this kid's real name? The the guy who gives the brooch uh, and does all this research. I think it's Max. Max. Okay. Well, Max and Bax. I'm close enough. <laughs> yes. Can I just say that it's. Really, really cl- creepy that Max mapped out an intercept point for the jock. Oh yeah, that's true too. But at a s- that's not that's not romantic. That's stalking, probably. But still, um, Alia and Marinette here noticed them, and they, you know, 
They go up and says, Ooh, who is this for? We're excited. Please let us know. And Marinette says, You know what, boy? You should go for it. Just do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. And yeah, Kim goes and chase after the love of his life. Once we know who said love of his life is, we sigh in pain. But anywho, before we go to that intersection, uh, Marinette decides that, yes, today I shall, de- I shall declare my, what you will call this, love to Adrian. And we shall do stuff. And yay! Oh, my, d- <laughs> oh, my dearest Adrian, when I ruffled through your garbage, I, I smelled your sweet scent. <laughs> Oh my oh, god. Yeah. So writing said love letter is confusing for Marinette. And Tiki just says, you know what, Marinette? Why don't you use his love letter as a point of reference? That'll be really cool if you do it. Whoa, whoa, back back, back up here. We we didn't really talk about the uh the Barbie stereotype. Oh, you you want to talk about it? Because I was trying to skip. Okay, go ahead, man. Okay, Barbie is nice compared to this, this, this female dog. <laughs> Let's go with that. Okay. I mean, I never real. It's been a while since I saw someone out Diamond Tiara. Mm. <laughs> I mean, Diamond Tiara, at least her motives were all about herself. This is trying to claim a, a boy likes you even though you had to deceive him. There is a quantum singularity of of mental health around this girl. She is messed up on so many accounts that are like... I wonder in this series, is she ever going to get better? Or is she just going to stay the mean girl throughout the entire series? You, you, you want to know, I, I've seen future episodes and there's one episode where Chloe is pondering, why doesn't everyone like me? And his butler... She, she has to ask? Yeah, yeah. And, Good Lord. And his butler says that, you know what, why don't you try being nice? See what happens then. Like, it worked for a bit, but she struggles at it. But, you know, I'm not going to talk about Chloe for now because Chloe is one of those characters where I see that they're not going to improve her or redeem her or whatever it is. Like Diamond Tiara, we saw a point where she's mean, but at least she got a goal. But with Chloe here, she's just mean to be mean. Yeah. But, okay. Mean to be mean, not, not a very interesting character in all this. The minute you become that one note, you just sort of, I think you lose a good chunk of your audience. Yeah, true. Or, or maybe, I don't know, for a younger, for a younger audience, maybe it, it is just, oh, I know a kid like that in school and I hate them. Probably, probably. Yeah. Attack, yeah. attack destroy her. <laughs> but let's talk about the ladybug love. Oh, well, yeah. Because. Because. <laughs> Wow, I I can only imagine the romantic discussions you have, Safi. <laughs> oh, I have many, but it's with my boyfriend. I just don't like this lovey-dovey stuff from this show. Well, let's talk about the actual myth of the ladybug, because when one settles upon the love note as it's being written, mm-hmm. minuet, is it minuet? Marionette. Marionette, okay, yeah. Think of a puppet. Yes, believe me. The awkward movement she does reminds me of that. <laughs> because again, these characters, they tend to zip and, and sort of yank themselves between points very fast. And it creates this weird, uncanny valley for me. It's like, you don't look like a human, but you're trying to be a human. <laughs> and I'm sorry, oh pod people, but you're freaking me out. <laughs> oh boy, okay. But your point but, on the love letter again, Silva? All right, Ladybug settles on the love letter. Well... And I am reading here. Mm, mm. There is an ancient Chinese legend that links the ladybug with love. The story goes that when a ladybug comes to call, it is a sign that true love will pay us a visit. Further renditions of the legend state the number of spots in the ladybug indicate the amount of months that will pass until you are united with with our true love. So let's see here. This ladybug, uh, looking at the gallery. Uh, I'm going to assume five. So it's five months until they really fall for one another. Now, if that were to happen to me, a ladybug would have so many spots it would appear like a beetle. <laughs> oh, boys. Oh, boys. Uh, but still, it's hope, probably. Oh, but one thing I need to point out, Silver, about Marionette's name, because someone in the comment, uh, I'm sorry for forgetting your name, 
uh, wanted me to pass this on to you because uh, he said that uh, Marinette's name means one who rise and Dupin means bread. So Marinette's name can be translated to she who raised bread as in baker. So it's a play on words there. And it's on a need to know basis? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the answer is yes. <laughs> oh, but she's not a part of the upper crust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ha <laughs> <laughs> Safi. Let me have this. <clears throat> but any. Let me have this. Again, I need to hold on to this as Marionette has these horrific faces as she thinks that her friend has discovered she's Ladybug. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I know I'm part of the older generation now when the main characters are talking about what's on their blog. Oh, yeah. Do any of you think when I was watching cartoons as a wee tyke, Optimus Prime stopped fighting Megatron because <laughs> he needed to tweet about this? <laughs> no, he won't stop fighting, man. It, it'd be an app in his brain where he could just um, allocate some processes to update his tweets. Do you think G.I. Joe took a screen, sh took a shot of their battle and posted on Facebook, oh my, OMG, we can't hit anything, lol. <laughs> uh, Are the Silverhawks communicating over Skype? No, man, he's used Discord. <laughs> oh my god. This is our modern era where one of our characters, her main... One of her main roles is to run a blog. Hey, it's, uh, it's the times, man. Like, way back in the days, it was a fan club and so on. So it's still, it's kind of relevant for this day and age. I'm old in this day and age <laughs> and feeling older still. Oh, but anywho, let's try to make you feel young. Uh, talking about blogs, Adrian is surfing the Ladybug fan site and... Wow. <laughs> and it's wondering, who could Ladybug be? Uh, I wonder who. I'm in love with this person. Oh, wow. I wish I knew who this person was. Well, here, well, I, no, actually, I'll, I'll say this for the very end. Because here's the thing I'm not sure I understand. Does Adrian get to talk with uh, Marionette? It seems like she's always hiding behind and not really engaging him in person. Here's what I've seen so far. Uh, in the earlier episodes, Marinette is a bit shy about it. But as time goes on, they do communicate as friends. And yeah, um, their interactions are modest at best. There's this one episode where she, Adrian, and Max join the school's esports team to play some fighting game. And they, it seems to be working well because... Uh, Marinette and Adrian goes to train. They have they have fun and whatnot. And yeah, it's all it's good. It was all good and dandy and whatnot. Yeah, so it's all fun. But at the same, did they did they play Overwatch? Nah, man, they play some. <laughs> it's in okay. Copyrights aside, they play quote unquote Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or Injustice. Pick your fighting game of choice. But you, how dare you treat those as interchangeable? I you have to look, right, Norman. you have to look at that I'm episode. Offended, sir. You have to look at that I, episode, man. Like I, I challenge you to pistols at now. Oh God! I win. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. But anywho, but anywho, getting back onto the main plot of the story, we get to see Kim waiting at the bridge and seeing the love of his life, which is Chloe, and Kim being the romantic gets on one knee and declares his love for Chloe, while at the same time, too, anything that could go wrong goes wrong with the said proposal, like kneeling in a puddle of water, getting splashed by water, was it? Yeah, getting splashed by water, and having a potato chip bag stuck on his head by the wind. And Chloe says, oh, wait, stay there, takes a picture, and post it on the WhatsApp group for the... The WhatsApp group. The, the, the Twitter. She tweets it. Tweets it? Just a minute. She tweets it. No, it is because yep. it doesn't, it's not really a tweet because it's a DM from her to everyone. You know, I don't care anymore. Uh, Chloe here is a witch. And feeling rather depressed and heartbroken, 
Yes, you know what this means, boys and girls. Hawk Moth comes in and... Yep. Oh no, the dreaded Hawk Moth! Look out for the dreaded Hawk Moth! Quick, Fly Swatter Man, save us! <laughs> but anywho, Hawk Moth says, Hello, my victim. I shall call you Dark Cupid, and you shall destroy all the love and friendship and make season eight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Actually, it is kind of... It is kind of funny. This he would make a good My Little Pony. Oh, well. yeah, true that. It'll be it'll be a good counterpart to Cadence. But anywho, Dark Cupid here agrees and flies to the town, shooting his scatter arrow and shooting his Ryugawa te kurao to people. Ah, uh, take, take it, Hanzo. <laughs> you ruined the game. When are you gonna get nerfed? <laughs> Probably next build. I don't know. And yes, he shoots arrows at people, making them be mean and rude to their significant others and this and they get black lipstick which makes them goths <laughs> he's making goths yeah, yeah yeah all of all of france is going to be goths so no one will tell the difference <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah but <No>. anywho <laughs> um while this is happening we go back to the dupan family's bakery why where mr dupan is making candy apples for his store to sell them and stuff we get to see uh, Marionette and Alia go out to send the letter, and before she could do any, I'm sorry, and she briefly inserts the letter into the mailbox. Yay, much fun! And I'm going to speed things up because we're running low. Uh, Duck Cupid shoots an arrow at Alia, and Alia somehow becomes really, really mean, saying she becomes Chloe. Yeah, yeah, true, true <laughs> that, true that. And Marionette sees that. What the hell? Oh, is that? Oh no! Um, my friend became a evil supervillain. This needs to be rectified. She runs over to a park bench and transforms. A park bench? You can see a screenshot for this. How is that park bench gonna conceal anything of your transformation? I got no idea. In the very first Superman movie, he runs to a public phone booth. And it's, you know, it, it's only waist high, so he has to go into, like, a turnabout to transform. Or, you know, change. Mm -hmm. It's just like, this is if he'd actually gone with the phone booth. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But still, um, I, I do have to give credit where credit's due. The first-person view of the jumping from building to building scene is really impressive. I do like this one. Oh, first-person platformer. That's always tough. Oh, yeah, true, right? But anywho, we get to see... Um, Chloe being really disappointed at the photo frame because she ordered a 24 karat gold frame not an 18 karat gold frame what is this trash redo it you scrub get good and Hanzo here shoots the arrow and it hits Sabrina and Sabrina becomes really really mean to Chloe and oh, yay what... it looks like he hit her with his common sense arrow <laughs> yeah <laughs> But still, uh, Marionette here confronts Dark Cupid, and yeah, they have a fight for a bit, and Ladybug here jumps off the roof, and gets, well, confronted with Cat Noir. Cat Noir here wants to confess his feelings for Ladybug, telling her that I, 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 I care for you, I, I, it's more than care, but before anything could happen, uh, Dark Cupid here shot an arrow, being the chivalrous man that Cat Noir is, he takes the arrow. And... Okay, chivalrous is subjective. They're in that position because he was... had her standing on a pole invading her personal space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Again, well, just a... then again, Silver, this is France. <laughs> I mean, every... Uh, not every country knows the concept of personal space. I... I'm just saying, if someone tried to convince, confess their love to me at that close to space, it'd be like, are you going to try to eat my nose? <laughs> but, <clears throat> but uh, since we know what the effect of their arrow does, it makes people become real jerks. And before Cat Noir could say something nice, he says that, Ladybug, you're a big fat meanie and you're a booby head. I don't like you. 
Well, considering I, I recently watched Face Dandy episode three with my uh, friends and whatnot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anywho, Dark Cupid and Cat Noir here team up to become Genji and Hanzo. Yeah, the most hated group in Overwatch. Yeah. That's not how you say May. <laughs> hey, Silver, <laughs> that's not how you say Chloe. <laughs> well, Clo- okay. Okay, we're back to the Clark Kent syndrome as Chloe t- lectures Ladybug. And I did love I did love when Chloe says, "Who could who would have a grudge against me?" Ladybug, <laughs> everyone on the planet. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that they're, they're conversing and talking and she's like right up against Ladybug. It doesn't even see it. You people are dumb. <laughs> yeah, but anywho, while this is going on, uh, Ladybug fights off both Cupid and Cat Noir. And Cat Noir here is really, really putting the, whatchamacallit, well, he's putting up a fight. And suddenly it, suddenly, and suddenly Ladybug has the realization of, hey, if I give Cat Noir a kiss, it'll break the curse. So, pucker up, kitty cat. I'm going to give you a kiss. And, and I love how all of a sudden all his ferocity just goes. So he's like, who else is thinking of the, the scene from Inside Out with the mind of a teenage boy? Oh. Girl! Girl, 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 girl! <laughs> okay, um, guys, I, I need to say something and point out the script here because it's really funny to me but if you guys think it's inappropriate you let me know and I'll let Sweetie Bot know to cut it out because the way that Ladybug says the line come here pussy cat let me give you a kiss like that give me a giggle <laughs> of course it would give you a giggle look pretty soon we're gonna see Ladybug chasing some pussy <laughs> there it is there it is there it is do it I knew you'd say that. It's because I said it to you last night. Yes, and I was ready to post it on Twitter, but I took blackmail. Well, now it's a part of public record. Yes. And, and it had the desired effect. Our more. deal still stands, though. I'd like to let you know that. Are you sure? Because this is going to get posted yes. online. My, yes, our my... deal still stands. You are still not allowed to make fun of me for that <laughs> stuff. But I mission accomplished. Norman is in full giggle and laughter mode. I mean, you you think our talk last last time about daring do getting tied up it was uncomfortable? Uh, let's just let's just skip to the scene where uh, Chloe gets dissed, but she doesn't have the. Uh, Heart look to uh, even take the, even take that as anything. Mm-hmm. I will say I take issue that she was awful for posting the guy's picture on not Twitter, and yet now we're supposed to say justice is done because her own picture got posted on not Twitter. Ah, uh, no, no, I, I I can't agree with with sending that kind of message to kids. It's like yeah, an act is wrong regardless of the target. Yeah, true. But mm-hmm. speaking of wrong, <laughs> Ladybug manages to snag Cat Noir by the ankle, oh, God. Tie, ties him to a pole, and Spider-Man hangs in front of him. Yep, yep, yep. Like, come here, big boy. I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, you're the good guys, right? This seems like... Uh, Fifty Shades of Bond. It will probably appeal to your bondage fetish, there, Silver. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Oh, boy. but I mean, here's Ladybug just tried to to to, to force the smackaroo. It was like, what what are you doing? This seems so wrong. Hey, so I, very wrong. It's for a good reason. Oh, it's for a good reason. You know, I'm sure the prince in Sleeping Beauty said the same thing. <laughs> oh God, no. But anywho. Ladybug tries to give Cat Noir a kiss, but fails because Dark Cupid's there to save his bro, bro. And yes, they team up to kind of defeat Ladybug and get her miraculous. Bros before female superheroes. <laughs> yes, yes. So 
Ladybug finds a way with her lucky charm, and it's a candy apple. And she uses her, um, what you call this, high noon sight, and discovers every point of thing that she needs to do. Reminds me of that uh, Action Man cartoon. Wow, which one? The two D or the three D? The three D. Oh. Okay. Okay. At least someone knows what I'm talking about. That makes me feel better. All right. Basically, in Action Man, he his mind would process the situation and highlight where to go or what actions to take. This is very much the same, except that it's a bit more confusing. Uh, yes, it is true. That is true. Because, you know what? From day one, I never really understood what the whole thing is. Like, I, I do understand the power, but I could never pinpoint all the things that needed to be connected. Like, I could not connect the dots. Like, okay, here, in this picture here, it's highlighting the... Okay, she gets a candy apple. And one of the things I highlighted is the fountain. The other thing is... Uh, what was that again? Uh, Cat Noir's cataclysm, because he activated it. The other is uh, Dark Cupid's um, arrow thingy, whatever it is that's there. Or, or the, the brooch on his on his uh, arrow. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So all these three are connected. Now, tell me, what does this have to do with Candy Apple? Well, it made his hand sticky so Dark Cupid couldn't lose a bow, but... How she would figure that out, I don't know. I'm so confused. Yep. I'm confused too, Silver. Because here's the thing. If we try to think and try to piece the puzzles together, we could never do it unless somebody is really, really into this universe. I would just, I would dare say that I'm a casual. Yes, I'm, I dare say I'm a casual. I'm a filthy, filthy casual who likes to scream about this a lot. Sure I'm so confused! You have way too much of a dirty mind. Boy. I'm not the one who concludes their victory by saying pound it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, continuing on. And Mary, why do I keep calling Mary, Ladybug Marionette? They're the same person, but you know what, whatever. Um, as we continue on, Ladybug in extra plan. First, she does a cool dodge from Cat Noir's thing. She jumps high up, uh, throws the candy apple at Dark Cupid, which gets stuck on his head, Dark Cupid feels insulted by it, and throws the candy apple away. He tries to shoot the arrow, but it's, since his hand is sticky by the candy apple thingy, and then, yeah, it's like, full. Oh, it's really crappy. Like, oh God. Well, whatever, whatever. Just go watch it to understand. And the fight scene between Cat Noir and Ladybug here is cool. It's cool, I think, because we get to see Cat Noir pin down Ladybug. Yes, and almost get uh, the... 14 years old! They are 14 years old! I need to look up the age of consent in France now. I, no, I'm sorry, there are there are times where I, I have to turn off the, the cultural respect and just say, no, I cannot get behind this. So, anywho, uh, yeah. um, while trying to take off uh, Ladybug's Miraculous, Ladybug pulls in for the kill and breaks the curse. Yeah. I'm still yeah, a better... Son is 15. Okay. Never mind. Uh, 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 no. Anyway, still a better kiss than Last Jedi. <laughs> uh, so, Annie... I'm just saying. I'm just, just saying. It's, so, like, Annie... Like, who? Watch, the, watch the Last Jedi. is like, what the heck was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> are, they, are they an item? I didn't really sense the chemistry. Let's see this number what now again. Number seven. Last Jedi is no eight. It should be eight. Yeah. Oh, oh, don't maybe try to count the numbers because four is one and one is four and prequels and sequels. And, uh, uh, George Lucas directed the sequel to Rogue One. Uh, really? He did. He directed that. Yes. Yes. And these moments lead me a space dandy. Oh. But either way, I mean, Cat Noir is like, wait, what just happened? Yeah, poor guy. Poor guy, he, he, he's oblivious to everything. But anywho, uh, while being oblivious, Ladybug... <sighs> wow, Ladybug carries him in a fireman's carry? That's what you call it, right? It's, I've, got a, I've got a teenager with a death grip and not afraid to use him. <laughs> yep. She just... <clears throat> I use my cat noir attack. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and Ladybug throws... Cat Noir to his bro, Dark Cupid, and will while his cataclysm is activated, destroys his trap. Whatever happened to bros before 
female superheroes. I don't know, man. And with that, Cat Noir throws the curse's item to Ladybug, and Ladybug destroys it, and returning everything back to normal. Yay. Well, almost normal, because said poster with Adrian is vandalized. <gasps> the gas. And yes, as they celebrate their victory, Ladybug and Cat Noir give each other a bro hoof. Yes. Bro hoof, but I'm sorry, after all the rather awkward seeds I could list, saying pound it is just. <laughs> no. No. Ah, uh, no call. No comment, my friend. No comment, my friend. <laughs> but anywho, uh, before they leave, Cat Noir tries to confess his love to Ladybug. But Ladybug says, you know what, bro? Um, probably next time. Yeah, yeah, probably next time. Our miraculous is out of battery. So yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, here's the thing. This is why I asked earlier about Adrian even being aware of uh, Marionette's affections. Ladybug... It's kind of fun when she talks about we're running out of time, don't want to turn into a pumpkin. Mm-hmm. She's being lighthearted. I can see why he's smitten with the image of her because she is adventurous, uh, very selfless, mm-hmm. very brave, and has a sense of humor or flippancy. So I can see why he'd be attracted. He might not see Marionette because she doesn't do that in everyday life. Mm-hmm. And so I could see this dis- I could see this disconnect. But then the reversal makes a little less sense. How does she not know he's Cat Noir? She hears his voice. She would recognize his hair. Uh, but the thing is, um, in all honesty, from your description there, Silver, their personality is total 180 because uh, Marionette here has a shy demeanor to her while Ladybug has a more adventurous demeanor. Adrian here is more more guarded, more calm, while Cat Noir is, well, wild, like a cat. So it's really total opposite of characteristics. So if you were to tell someone that, hey, uh, Marionette is Ladybug, people would say, nah, man, don't joke, because Marionette and Ladybug are a totally different person. They don't act the same at all. Marionette is clumsy. Oh, look at the dork. No, I don't know about... I don't know. I'm still not totally... Surely someone has eyeballs. Oh, yeah, true, Dad. But uh, we, we mentioned this way back when, when we did the Christmas special. And this one here, too... Probably this one is more um, obvious or more clear with how they try to present the characters. But to me, their characters are a bit 180 from their uh, civilian life to their superhero life. At least it's not as bad as Sailor Moon. Uh. He doesn't even wear a mask and nobody recognizes Yep. Yep. Of course, of course there's, the, there's also one other flip side. Cat Noir, wild, adventurous, somewhat chivalrous. Mm-hmm. You know, invades personal space but takes an arrow for <laughs> you. I mean, there's give and take, I guess. Why is she attracted to Adrian? Let's just go home. I'm so broody. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> God. Oh, man. It, it, you, you know... I okay. I'm gonna pimp out a channel. I forgot what the channel's name on YouTube is, but it's 107 facts. And one of the few facts that they pointed out is that Adrian's character here was a redesign of a previous character from Toei, and the character Sasuke. <laughs> you wish, nah. But <laughs> you know what? It's almost because the character there is very, um, Adrian or whatever his name was, is very, what you call this? I, I don't remember, but he's very um, stuck up. Um, I won't say stuck up. He's, he's almost like Sasuke-ish. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, yeah that's what I'm saying, Sasuke. Yeah. Sasuke is basically every, even the, <clears throat> the writer said, Sasuke is basically just mush all the usual tropes together and you get Sasuke. Broody, quiet, dismissive, ladies' man, but doesn't have time of day for the ladies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the Cat Noir character is a total 180. Cause Edge. Yeah, yeah, Edge. Uh. Cause Edge. But, but anyway, they run off and Hawk Moth is like, ah, stupid Valentine's Day. No one got me candy. <laughs> yeah. I, 
I stand in this awesomely lit room, but I'm not really much of a villain. Oh, yeah. But anywho. I do like how Hawk Moth exerts control over the people he corrupts. Basically, you like these powers? Well, do what I say or I'll take them away. That's kind of a deal with the devil right there. True that, true that. And to Dark Cupid's credit, he did not dab. But anywho, um, carrying on, we see the mailman. I mean, I mean the mailman. <laughs> You're trapped in that mindset, Norman. Yes. Uh, open the letterbox and delivers the letter to the recipient. And Tiki says, "Yes, your chance. Go grab the letter." And Marinette says, "You know what? Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna roll with it. Whatever happens, happens." Uh, we go back to Adrian, who's feeling depressed because he didn't get a chance to confess his love to Ladybug and just feels, yeah, depressed. While Plague here says, Yo, Adrian, why do you feel sad? Look at all these love letters. Here, pick this one. Like, this one is a very fun one. Go read, 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 read. And when he reads it, it's a reply to his letter that he didn't send. And who could it possibly be? Comes in Ladybug and, oh, it's true love thing. Oh, but it's not signed. I wonder who could it be? Oh, I feel love is in the air or something like that. And while this is happening, Alia asks Marinette, did you sign the letter? And Marinette says, I don't remember. There's a lot of things happening, Ladybug, and you talking about your blog and whatnot. And Alia just lulls at her because, oh goodness, you forgot to sign your letter. (laughs) Oh, you're hopeless, Marinette. And end. With stills of a forced kiss Mm -hmm. and misunderstanding and this is love and if this is love i weep for the future (laughs) oh yes but anywho but anywho uh let's go to final thoughts silver what do you think of this episode i'm still the outsider looking in on this and i part part of me is glad nobody's saying i was like i'm an angry little (laughs) kitty (laughs) <laughs> I'm glad that didn't uh, go on, but you understand the characters a little bit better. It's funny. I I think this was the first time I watched the opening, mm. the theme song, mm-hmm. which is earworm material, by the way. <laughs> right. But it pretty much sums up the relationships very quickly in the opening. How they're in love with one is in love with the other in civilian and, and the other is in love with her in superhero form, but they're clueless. It's fun, but there is a lot of awkwardness if you approach it from somewhat of a, a, a jaded older person, as apparently I adopt. <laughs> All right. And I don't know if I totally am on board with some of the messages of it's okay to humiliate someone else online as long as they're a jerk or forcing a kiss to save the day. Um, yeah, I, I don't agree. That either. Again, she she tied him to a, f- a street lamp and tried to force a kiss. It's like, I need an adult. Neither of you are adults. <laughs> uh, boys. So, you know, I, again, I am sorry to Miraculous fans if it seems like I'm hating on it or being so unfair. But from the outsider looking in, this is something that takes a lot of getting used to. Mm-hmm. And I'm not quite used to it, especially with Tiki buzzing and... <laughs> Getting all up in my face. You terrify me, Tiki. I, I, I don't doubt you there. Like, you need to get used to Tiki. And since this is, what, your second viewing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seppi, what about you? Okay, my thoughts on this, this episode. I I can't really relate to it, like, on any level at all. <laughs> like, I watched this episode and it's like, oh, it's a typical Valentine's Day episode. Kid shows Valentine's Day, not not my thing. I mean, I've seen the specials. I've seen every single ounce I could. I hate them all. This is one of them. <laughs> so, wait. As, as I am very much in love with my own lover and whatnot, mm-hmm. I have a different idea of love. My idea of love is getting married on the back of a motorcycle than going to Las Vegas for a honeymoon. Oh, wow, all right. While playing with tons and tons of 80s rock. Wow. So unless you give me a special like that, you'll never appeal to me. <laughs> All right, that, that is very specific. It is very specific, and you will never change my mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. But anyway, as for me, 
this episode was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to see the derps happening. And in all honesty, when Master of Black told me about there being a Valentine special for uh, this series, I got confused and I asked, wait, what? There's a Valentine special? What? When? Where? What episode? He told me the series and number and I said, wait, this was a special? Really? It didn't seem that special to me. Most Valentine's Day specials aren't Norman. No, well, you got the Christmas special, and he had his own episode. I would have assumed, but still, um, getting to see the interaction of playing hard to get cat noir was fun. It reminded me of a the well, Pepe Le Pew and the poor cat that got paint on her back. Yeah, it reminded me of that a bit. Yeah. Oh yes. That happens quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. And in this scenario here, um, poor Cat Noir is the victim and it's funny to see him struggling while we know that he wants the kiss but is not really getting it. And uh, yeah, it's much fun. It's much fun. And in all honesty, there's uh, an episode in season two that does this a lot better, quote unquote. Uh, maybe I'll link it to you if you're interested. But hey, um it's still there online if you want to go catch it but considering the last two episodes you made us watch no we're not i am still open to what is it what did i say three episodes mm -hmm. with the christmas special two out of three. i don't know can the christmas special count as it's relying pretty heavily on you knowing all of this and a musical if you want to give it another shot quote unquote take it four uh, and discount the christmas i don't mind because um, the show itself is fun. It's harmless fun. It's quote-unquote like ponies, but it's humans and it's 3D and it's talking about superheroes and stuff. I I'm, I'm not selling it to you, am I? <laughs> but still, um, <clears throat> it's fun. It's just harmless fun. And this episode here is a lot of fun. For a person who follows the show, for a person who is a fan of the show, getting to see the interaction between... Ladybug and Cat Noir was fun. And seeing uh, Chloe get her comeuppance here was also fun too. Because I have to point out, there was a girl who was very depressed that Adrian confessed, quote-unquote, confessed his love to Chloe. And Chloe being the rather mean girl told Sabrina to zoom in on set poster to a girl who is not crying. She's, she deserves what she got. So, anywho, uh, with that, we ended the episode, and yeah, it was a lot of, technically for me, it was a lot of fun and a really hoot of a review. And Silver, what are we going to do next week? Yes, next week we shall drink heavily. <laughs> oh, Please. For I will have visions of tikis buzzing around my heads and very strangely dressed kids chasing each other. And the people <laughs> of France are, are strangely accepting of a winged man flying and shooting arrows at people. It's another Tuesday. It's a, a laissez-faire is taken to an extreme. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I just remember something. Whatever I wanted to point out doesn't really apply because this episode is special and it comes out, out of schedule. So you know what? Probably next week it'll be a something. I don't remember. So just wait. We did Daring Done not too long ago. And so we get to visit with Rarity and learn that it's the main thing about her. Oh, that's another good one. But but technically, um, this one is going to be released somewhat earlier because special Valentine's and whatnot. So, you know what? I'm not going to make any promises, but that is what we're going to review next. What's going to come up next, I cannot promise anything. There we go. But anywho, folks at home, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and also coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. And those contents, they'll be posted one week before the public viewing. So that'll be good. And... If you do take a notice on the Patreon, if it has a bracket that says Patreon edit, that's going to be only for the Patreons because in that episode, one of us said something that's too risque for the YouTubes and iTunes. So yeah. Hate. <laughs> so yeah, 
um, if you would like to hear those insanity, why not support the show? And like I mentioned before, thank yous. I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, Master of Leg, Amy, Mark, Charles, and also Lucky Knight. Thank you guys for the awesome support. You guys have been awesome and kind to me. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Verquil. And I've been Sapphire Hartson. And we'll guys catch you next week with a normal, non Cupid, non Ladybug episode of the MBS show. With that, see ya. Remember Love's First Heimlich. <laughs> Bye. Bye, me. Keep the puppy. Also, I see how it is, Norman. You'll make a coffee page for yourself, yet you won't give me a cup of coffee.